Hello, welcome to another edition of Sparky Help. This time, two different methods of SY cables. Please like, share and subscribe. So let's first of all, let's start with the elephant in the room. Here's an extract from the on-site guide, which says that the purpose of the general publication of BS7671 installation use of non-standard cables such as SY and CY and YY cables are discouraged. These are cables that are generally made to standards, as seen below. It's important that cables have approval from independent testing organisations. Some manufacturers state that their cables generally comply with British standards. This is not deemed sufficient for the purposes of BS7671. But people still use it. What do they use it for? Well, it's primarily it's a controlled cable. So this is information from Doncaster Cables. And as it says there, it is generally to BSEN 50525-2-11-2011. And what do they say it's used for? It's interconnecting cables for measuring, controlling and regulation in control. So this is primarily a controls cable. It is not an armoured cable, although it does have a braiding which will provide it some screening. This cable comes with from 0.75mm squared right up to 95mm squared, from 2 cores to 50 cores, so they do a wide range with this cable, which remember is discouraged for the use in electrical installations, but is used in controls, and you will see it in a lot of air conditioning. If it's for outdoors, it should be covered because the sunlight damages it, as you've probably seen. So let's start with method 1, and this is the version that should be done when you're doing your AM2. So what do we have? We have this gland here, which is specially for SY cables, and it's got two washers, a banjo, a lock nut, a shroud, and it's effectively the, the nut itself is a stuffing gland, but it has this slot in the middle. So as before, as always with an armoured cable or any cable that has a sheath, we put the shroud on. And that will go on first to make sure that you get no ingress of any dust or anything in it and helps protect the gland itself. The banjo would go on obviously as normal and when you terminate it, it goes right up to the box so you need to strip it back to that point there making sure you've got enough for any sets or bends. And you strip that off, and for some reason this was a real nightmare to pull off. I don't know why. And then make sure that goes on first with one of the washers. What do we now need to do with the braiding? As I say, this was a nightmare, I don't know why. And then I have used a screwdriver before, but I found, you know what, I use my fingers, and we're just trying to pull them, tease them apart, Start from the top, start from the end, don't start from the bottom, we have to create this great big knot. And then we get these strands and twist them out, so we've got two strands in different directions. It may require a flattening because it has to go in those little notches. At this point I like to strip off this point here, being very careful not to go through the conductors. The conductors, by the way, are black and numbered, and apart from the green and yellow. And there we've got our strands, and wrap them round in the direction that you're going to tighten. Um, these, this is, this is one of the reasons why these are a pain in the backside, because you want to. They've got to stay inside there as you wrap them round, and they want to do everything but stay in there. To be quite honest, and invariably when you're making these off, so your washer goes on, you end up with stabbing your fingers and little bits of blood come out of your fingers. That then goes through. into your enclosure, whatever that happens to be, and then tighten this up. As I say, those strands want to come out, so you, as you start tightening it, you might find they do come out, and a little screwdriver just to push them back in. So they stay in, and then when you tighten it up, that will clamp those in position. And like I say, they do want to come out. So do it in the direction that it will, when it tightens, it's wrapping them round. Thank you. 
Luckily for me, the other end of this cable can spin. And then the last thing I'm going to do on that part is tighten down the stuffing gland part so it stops any ingress of anything going through into the enclosure. And that then secures it very well. And there's our ends. Numbered 1 and 2 so we don't need to bell them out. And then sleeve them for identification. Obviously if you had a banjo you could then drill through, put your shroud over and obviously you could run a fly lead off of the banjo. They are the thing about this is the manufacturers do not intend the braid to be used as a CPC, although you would earth it, hence they do provide a CPC inside. But it is not designed to carry fault current, but inevitably the fact that it is earthed down it will do. There's a particular gland that I've come across. This looks as though it could be really good um, and avoids all that faff. Or alternatively, here's another method. This is what you will not do in the AM2, but I'm sure there are lots of people out there that do it this particular method. So here's our cable again, terminating into an enclosure. I'm going to strip round and take that outer sheath off. Being carefully, like I say, for some reason this was a nightmare of a cable. Really will struggle to pull those off. And this time what we're going to do is I'm going to push it down and with a screwdriver this time I'm going to create an opening and then bend the cable and then loop it through and basically pull it through this hole in the bottom. And that then comes out and that leaves all of that braiding. Remember this is not armouring. And then we've got the braiding separate which you could then sleeve and then terminate into something should you wish and then obviously the strands of the cables the strands of the cables the conductors of the cables which again are numbered and you could put something around it uh, what am I going to do I'm going to try something different So I'm going to put some heat shrink round it. Put the sleeving on. Like so. Terminate it down. Identification. Ideally a little bit bigger uh, heat shrink would have been ideal and then shrink it down but that's what I had to hand and then a stuffing gland controversial I know but I'm sure that many people have come across these and probably installed may have installed it yourselves and in with a stuffing gland which for all intents and purposes so is the brass one is effectively a stuffing gland but has that the sheathing go through And then identify the end strip and terminate. So there we have it. That's two methods of installation. I would like to know which one would you do? This is Sparky Help. Hope this has been helpful. Please like, share and subscribe.